Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to Our Issues Birmingham. Today's guest uh, needs no introduction. He is the current mayor of the city of Birmingham. He was with us before he was elected, right after he was elected, but before he took office. And now he's been in office for what? Eight weeks, Tommy. Eight weeks. I wanted to have you at 100 days. That seems to be the magic number in the politics world, but... It's, I know, a, it's an interesting number. I know, it's, a, it's, it's a number that pushes us to be able to assess a lot of th- a lot of things. Well, I think uh, we had General Krulak, one of your transition team mm-hmm. leaders, on, uh, and I think the fact that you had some window there to get a running start before you took office was beneficial. Extremely. Uh, so, just kind of tell us an overview of what you've learned in the last two months, three months? Um, so a couple of things. Um, one are the priorities. The priorities have not changed. Um, we have to address public safety and crime. We have to invest in neighborhood revitalization, which is rooted in community development, which we have an actual department. And we have to figure out a way to provide basic services better. A lot of that is a combination of public works and our PEP department, uh, planning, engineering, and permits. The combination of that, as well as some other departments, what we've decided to do in the eight-week window is to go ahead and start a process of partnering with a third-party organization to do a performance audit um, for our top um, six departments. Uh, This performance audit allows us to be in a place to understand what we currently have, how how we currently operate, and if it is or not working for us, and then best practices from there as well as um, efficiencies and, and cost savings. Who who does that? Who does that? Work? Um, we've we partnered with an organization called Crow, and they come in and basically get in the weeds. Our uh, super weeds. It is um, the operational side of things, the financial side of things for that department, um, personnel, um, even organizational um, structure, leadership. It even goes into the space of is this department right size, making sure it's not too top heavy. Well, that costs Overstaff money. or understaff, yes, it does. And so we're spending money to try to save money, I yeah. suppose. If, I, I if, think it's a very reasonable cost. Yeah. To, but the return, here's the, so here's what the return gets it's us. It's a long-term return. And short. In a perfect world. The city of Birmingham has not had a performance audit in over 30 years. It's a long time. So we keep doing the same thing we've been doing, as well as we just do a, a run-of-the-mill budget process. What I am trying to make sure we do is align all of our resources, our human capital and our financial capital to make sure what we spend our time in and how we provide our services is maximized for our residents. Well, one of the big things that you were concerned about going in and one of your political, uh, I mean, uh, campaign uh, positions was the lack of transparency Mm -hmm. in the financial aspects of the city of Birmingham's budget. That's correct. So have we made some progress there in terms of what you've been able to uncover in your first few months of, of what we've been spending and where the money's been going? And yeah, have well, you learned some something you didn't expect? Not yet. So we're peeling back. Um, the finance department is one of the departments we're actually doing a performance audit on. And so we're patient. To, to get back information on what's going on in the actual department, a deep dive into how money's been spent, what it's been spent on. And uh, what is the timeline that you think this performance audit will need to get uh, the answers to those questions? We hope to have majority of the information in the next eight to 10 weeks or earlier. Okay, so they'll move relatively quick. They have to. Well, one of the things that's been talked about a good bit just, this, just recently, of course, this show will air a few weeks post uh, the actual taping of it, but uh, the new stadium Mm -hmm. has been in the news a good bit. Uh, And there's been some, uh, I don't want to say contention, but there are some concerns by folks about what's going to happen with Legion Field if we put 30 million, 3 million a year for 30 years, I think is what the city has said it would do. Is that an accurate statement? That's correct. 
What, what's the plan there? I, I think it's a great idea, not that it matters what I think, but I think you're well aware that we need something like that. And so it's, it's two separate conversations, um, and I think they're both very warranted and fair. One is on the uh, new stadium. It's not an isolated conversation. What we're talking about is a full investment and in the expansion and, I guess, investment in the current infrastructure of the BJCC, which is our convention space, et cetera. Also, what we're talking about is the expansion and investment in the current infrastructure legacy arena. And then next to that is a new stadium, 55,000 seat stadium. The combination of all three of those things puts us in a great space as far as being competitive, competitive with other um, southern state cities as it relates to tourism, as it relates to conventions, sporting events, entertainment, et cetera. We have to invest in that. And it's not just something new, it's investing in what we already have. We've been talking about this. We found an article from January 25th of 1965. Wow. It's time to actually move towards action on this. Just that I was in the eighth grade in that year. <laughs> wow. And um, but but separate from that, what I like to remind people is the city invested in a new baseball stadium, but we still own Rickwood Field. It's still city property. We still invest in it. Two weeks ago, we put a million dollars in its infrastructure. And so it's not an or situation, it's an and. We can have a new stadium expansion of BJCC and Legacy Arena and still support and invest in Legion Field. And Legion Field is not an isolated conversation. Legion Field is a part of the Smithfield community. So we can't just talk about an actual and existing stadium. We need to invest in the entire community. I'm going to follow up with that about income and outgo and all that mm -hmm. in just a minute as it relates to what you're talking about investing in. I'm Tommy Spina. We are with Mayor Woodfin today talking about things going on in our city. We'll be right back. Do not go away. <laughs>